Hey guys, Lika here. If you've been watching my series on building a Bitcoin Lightning Network node with the CryptoCloaks.com Lightning Shell case, you'll remember that after the first video, uh, the guys at CryptoCloaks released a new case, uh, updated Lightning Shell case that would accommodate for the active heatsink uh, Raspberry Pi case that has recently come out. Look at this thing. I mean, tell me that's not going to keep this baby cool. And honestly, upgrade, this is all it comes with right here. Upgrading um, the case is really, really simple. Installing the new heatsink case for the Raspberry Pi is really, really simple. So I'm just gonna take you through it. This won't take long, just about five minutes to get this done. You'll remember with the original build we did, it had this fan shim also from Pimeroni. Um, so we won't need this anymore. This is completely gonna be taken out of the design because this a uh, new active cooling heatsink is going to keep the entire Raspberry Pi 10 to 15 degrees lower than what you were getting before. I hope that's true. I mean, originally my Lightning Network node never went more than probably 75 to 80 in there. It would, it would probably idle around 70 to 75 degrees usually, except when it was sinking. So, I mean, it would be nice to get that lower. My, where I've got my Pi kept, it's pretty cool anyway, but if you're in a, a hotter temperature, you might still need a fan. I know the guys at, at CryptoCloaks are working on with this other case. It's just like this, but it has a fan included in it. Um, they say it's really great and really quiet, and those will probably be coming out soon. But if you're in like a, a normal temperate zone or whatever, then this is probably just going to be all you're going to need. Right, one thing to remember, guys, for this exercise, this upgrade, we're not going to need the bottom plate of the aluminum passive cooling case at all. So this is just not needed. Right, so step one, you're going to need your Allen key because we are about to take the Crypto Cloaks case apart. That's the first step. I'll just fast forward through this quickly. Okay, so here it is taken apart. Now we're gonna have to remove it with these four screws. So once again with your hex key. And now that I've done that, you can see I've still got this uh, fan on here. I'm going to remove that now because we won't need it anymore. And this thing's going to be totally silent. Just pulls off. Okay, so before we go any further, we're going to stick the thermal pads onto the CPU. Now, I talked to the guys at Crypto Cloaks about this because the guys at Pimeroni included three. Uh, these thermal pads and it's like well, there's three spots you can put it on. I've actually got a heat sink on one of mine and What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove This heat sink here off mine because I don't think it's going to fit This is gonna be in the way So I'm gonna remove uh, the one that I've got on there and I talked to the guys at crypto cloaks and they said that they managed to put three on and It was nice and tight. So I mean, let's do that Okay, so the thing to note about these uh, thermal pads, there's two sides to these. There's a clear side, which you're looking at now, and then there's this white side. It's the white side that goes attached to the CPU. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is a bit frustrating, so do it this way and it'll be easier. Basically, once you've got the thermal pads on, put these screws in about halfway, see that? Okay. Then set the pie board on top of the screws. Hopefully you can see that. And next, gently place the passive cooler on there. Okay, put your finger like this. Flip it over. And thumb screw these in. But don't do one all at once. Do them a little bit each corner like this 
And what you want to do is you want to keep an eye on the passive cooling top and make sure that the threads are getting caught by the screw from the bottom. It took me a few tries to get it. I think I've got it here. Let's uh, tighten these up. Another thing to keep in mind is that these do not tighten all the way. So they're gonna hang out a little bit at the end. And you don't want them to be over tightened, but you want the board to be pressed against that active cooling top, the aluminum top, so that it dissipates the heat of those three chips properly, right? That's the goal here. I think I've got it this time. First time didn't work out, so I had to take it apart. This time I got it. You see here? Oh yeah, that's nice and secure now. Before it was wobbling around and the case or the board was wobbling around, now it's it's really good. So that's that, and that's really it. So like we're 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 almost done here, guys. Let's just finish up. Okay, so before we do the screen, you gotta do the third layer. Sits in nicely, and if you remember the screen kind of holds it in place. The screen fits in like so. And coup de grass, the last piece, right there. Have a look here, does the screen look right? It does. And that's it guys, you know the rest. Put in the thumb screws. Yeah, this thing's really designed well. I mean, the original was designed well. This one's not that much of a pain to upgrade to. And I mean, it's totally worth it because now we're gonna have completely silent Bitcoin node, Bitcoin Lightning Network node. All right, guys, that's about it. Okay, cool. I've been running the node for mm, 30 minutes now, and the temp is 53 degrees Celsius. Wow. That's about it, guys. If this video helped you in any way, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at LeetGuy. Thanks again to the guys at Crypto Cloaks for sending us the upgraded Lightning Shell case. Here we are. We're at 60 degrees after doing some sinking. Totally worth it.